Jocelyn, how does imagination cultivate the life of our dreams? Well, to have a dream, to have a life of your dreams, you have to dream, and dreaming is imagination. You use your imagination to dream. You, you use your imagination. You know, um, Einstein talks about imagination. I can't give you a bunch of clever ones, but you should look them up because Einstein and imagination, unbelievable. Another person that I admire and adore and, and, and was lucky enough to spend time with as a child is Buckminster Fuller. Buckminster Fuller talks about imagination. Look at Buckminster Fuller's imagination. He went against all grain. Bucky Fuller um, designed the geodesic dome. Nobody had seen a shape like this. This was an architecture that didn't exist before. But he dared to dream. It's really that thing of dare to dream. When you dare to dream, you engage your imagination. Your imagination is the most powerful thing you have. One of the greatest problems with young people today is that they're not reading. Reading is singularly the greatest exercise for your imagination. If you and I read the same book, we make two completely different movies in our heads. You have to it, visualize the movie. You have to imagine the movie from the book to your head, to your imagination, to create a movie. You create one, I create another. When we watch a movie, we are delivered the pictures. And so we pretty much see the same movie. Um, when you read, you know, you have to make pictures in your head. And this is the problem with, with uh, today, illiteracy today, is all the pictures are being delivered, and they're being delivered on television, they're being delivered on your computer, they're being delivered on your cell phone, they're just all these pictures, and advertising, it's just all pictures delivered, so we get lazy, and we don't think we have to make any pictures in our head. Well, if we can't make pictures in our head, if we can't, if we don't read in order to engage our imagination, if we can't have a dream because our imagination is flaccid, meaning it has not been exercised, we, we become slaves. We become, you know, pushed around by anything that comes in our viewpoint. We can be led by others with ill intentions. I'm going to go out on a limb a little bit now and tell you, you know, I think when we look back on this time in history, we'll look at it as um, corporate terrorism because it is really this kind of corporation, this selling of everything under the sun um, that is stripping away imagination. You strip away imagination, you strip away possibility, you strip away intelligence. You strip away greatness, imagination and greatness, same thing. Nothing great ever happened on the planet without first being imagined. There is nothing great about selling Nikes. There is nothing great about buying every small mom and pop organization, just gobbling up that small business so you can have... I, oh, did you have another quarter that I haven't gotten from you? Let me reach in there and get that quarter too. You know, it's just, it, it's, it's astounding. And it's, it, you know, if we don't do something about it, it's going to take, 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 take down the human race. The planet will be fine because she doesn't care about time. You know, if it takes her another 200,000 years to grow those old, beautiful trees again, she, she knows what she's doing. Bucky Fuller said, you know, we should listen to nature because she knows exactly what she's doing. And if we just studied a scientist's nature and we took that and rolled the same principles into our own sustainability in life, we would have no problems. We would have no problems. You know, Bucky, uh, went, he was a mathematician. He was a genius. He was the Einstein of our time, but people don't know him as well. Bucky Fuller designed he could put the entire planet on the island of Haiti in geodesic domes and have every man, woman, and child a millionaire. He'd prove these things mathematically. It didn't make him very popular with uh, with corporate world, but you know, he, he did that. He designed two or three cars, but you know, they never they were wonderful cars, but no, these people were making money on cars. We're not gonna let you in that that playing field. 
you know, I saw him at the UN. He, you know, there's a map. They finally got the map of the world correct, a flat map, because they couldn't do a map of the world flat without it getting warped and this way or that way. So, of course, Bucky Fuller came along and said, oh, I know how to do it. And so he did it. It's a flat map. And you kind of see it. It, it goes like that. It, it goes in waves kind of like that. And so to introduce this map, they drew the map on the floor of the UN, right? A giant version of this map with all the countries and everything. And then they hired actors. And then Bucky did it mathematically so that, you know, this, you know, in relation to that, so the United States had, you know, lots of people and, and Africa, they could barely stay in the space in Africa because there were too many people. And then some countries only had two people. And then he did the resources. And he did kind of coins, and he did that mathematically. And of course, the United States was rolling, piles rolling and rolling in money. And then there were countries that had like one chip. This is, this is our resource. And then, you know, being actors, they started to improvise. And so the guys from the United States are like throwing money into other countries and stuff. But anyway. This is all imagination. You know, this all comes from his imagination. He had one of the great imaginations of our time. Imagination is greatness. Do you think most artists, actors, writers, what have you, come from a family situation where creativity and imagination were encouraged or discouraged and it was an act of rebellion? You have your head in the clouds all the time. Get your head out of that book. You know... I'm sure both of those things are true. I like to think of it as artists come in with a purpose. Then they just forget it. So they have to be reminded. But I think both of those things are true. Some of them say, you know, I'm going to be an artist. And some of them say, oh, yeah, art, I should do art. But I think it's a knowingness. I think a lot of times they come in knowing, you know, I, I'm different, and they, uh, very often you hear this thing that I had as a child, I feel different, I don't belong, I, I can't quite fit in, these people don't seem authentic to me, they're not behaving honestly, but I don't really understand that. You know, they, they feel a little betwixt and between, and so it is the struggle to alleviate that that uh, begins to stimulate, you know, the imagination. You know, I would go into the garden one of the greatest gifts my mother gave me was her gardens. I mean, she'd give them to me, but she was an unbelievable gardener. And she would have these gardens that, that some of the flowers you'd walk by and they were eye high. They, they were like, hello. And you would, so, you know, I would go in those gardens for four and five hours and take little things. I'd build little villages. How was this imagination stimulated? Because I wasn't comfortable around people. So... I think a lot of artists come in that way. They come in a little different and they're not comfortable around people and so they begin to use their imagination to alleviate that discomfort. And then what if an artist becomes a hit and now dance for us again and now they have to be on in front of other people no. and wait a minute, my comfort zone was creating this thing over here and I'm used mm. to being alone and what happens then? Well, that's, that's tough. That becomes very difficult. I mean, there are two ways that that happens. You know, I, I've worked, you know, I work as a creative consultant, so I've worked for a bunch of movie stars. And many of them wanted to be a movie star. That, that's what they wanted to do. And, you know, some of them, I think, you know, they, they came in to do that. I mean, it just is so apparent. And then when I would get there, the big secret would be they're not trained. They, they go on this desire and this work ethic and this goal and this intention to, to it's not to be the best, it's to be the most popular, um, which often comes from, you know, a, a not enough attention feeling. So I'm going to get this massive attention. Anyway, the first thing usually when I meet them, because I was raised with these painters and dancers and actors and writers extraordinaire at the dinner table. I don't really care who people are. I don't care if you have a big name, which is, makes me popular among those people because it's very rare. 
And then after a few months it, makes, months, it makes me unpopular because they're used to, a, you know, a certain thing that I'm not interested in. Anyway, the first thing that happens is they kind of admit that um, I'm not trained. I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm always impressed with them telling me that, you know, being so honest. But my answer is, of course, you know what you're doing. Look at your career. Look at where you've brought yourself. You did this. This is no accident. And so my first step is to draw up all the things they're doing right. So we go through all their films and their process, and, they, and then they can see, oh, every film, I do have a technique. I do do these 10, 20 things. And then I go, oh, we go from what you're doing right into what else is there? What other opportunities are there? And then I would go and do that work for them because they're very busy. You know, and, and a movie store is promoting their last film, working on the film they're going to shoot next, and bringing up the films of the future, trying to find those. So they don't have a whole lot of time, so I would do that work. Then you have the person that you're, you mentioned which is the person who is in it for the love and they just love acting and suddenly they are a hit overnight. And that's very scary and, and very difficult. And, you know, movie stars love the attention. They, they, they're very comfortable in that light. Uh, but not everybody is and not every actor is. And we've, you know, part of the problems that we have today is that you know, people are so critical and they're so, your audience is so expanded because of social media. So where you would do theater and maybe some people would be, you know, in the back, you know, in the alley after you performed and they'd say, can I have your autograph? And you go, yeah, that's a lot. And that was really nice. Now, you know, you have to have social media. You have to have Instagram. You have to have, I don't know, TikTok and MyLock and like that kind of thing. It's, it's crazy to me, but you have to have those things. And that brings more, more, more people. This is really one of the reasons I gave up acting is that I'm a shy by nature. You know, I want to be in the woods. I don't want, you know, all those people looking at me. I mean, that was one reason. And, and the other reason is I'm too alpha. I'm too alpha to take my hat in my hand. And, you know, I was a trained actor, so I would work really hard in an audition. I would bring the audition to the people with my little hat in my hand, and they would say, most of the time it's no, I don't know, 19 out of 20 or no. And, you know, I would have put that time in and the hair and the makeup and the wardrobe and the driving and the thing. This was a six hours on this just to get there, four hours in rehearsals maybe. That's 10 hours, 12 hours. And, you, and you're going to, no, no, I'm, no, I'm not going to put myself in that position. That's me. That's me. I, I just too alpha. I, I'd rather run the show and be nice to people and, you know, have it go the way that I want it to go. But not everybody's that alpha. So you have to find your way and what's intolerable to you and what's tolerable to you and what you can invent for yourself. How do I make it go the way that I want to go? But lastly, those those actors who hit it and then discover I'm not doing well with all this attention, you know, that's a difficult road and they need support. They need to be heard. We all need to be heard, really. They need to be heard and they need to spend real time creating it the way they want it to go. Okay, now you're hit. Now you can have anything you want in the world career-wise. What does that look like? Let's just take some time and breathe and say, what does that look like? You know, I introduce people to the concept of theater because, you know, theater actors can work, women particularly, you know, it expands their lifespan as an artist to do theater. And there's nothing more fun than doing theater in New York and, and London. So, you know, you kind of open up the possibilities and... Uh, really are sensitive to to the difficulty of that, of getting fame when you didn't really want it. You know, you didn't really ask for it. You were just in it for the work.